scapulothoracic dissociation actually is very important subject to discuss because once it heals, scapulothoracic dissociation will lead eventually to more than 10% deaths from this dangerous condition. Okay, so what does scapulothoracic dissociation mean? From the name, we can conclude that scapulothoracic dissociation is a dissociation between of the scapula from the chest. Okay, it is a dissociation of the scapula and the arm away from the chest. Okay, the dangerosity of this condition uh, comes from the fact that scap the scapula thoracic dissociation will lead in a lot of cases to a rupture in important structures in the shoulder. Important structures like brachial plexus and subclavian artery. وهذا هو سبب الوفيات الكثير في هاي الحالة. هون حط لكم مثال كيف ممكن scapular thoracic dissociation يصير. مثلا this patient was was pushed down from a high distance. When he was falling down, وجد سطح معين يمسك فيه. الوزن الجسم نازل بقوة عالية نتيجة الوزن والجاذبية. فجأة كل هذا الوزن راح يتركز في منطقة الشولدر لما الشخص هاد يمسك بسطح معين. ف تخيلوا التركيز الكبير على هاي المنطقة راح يؤدي بالنهاية إلى dissociation of the scapula from the chest وزي ما حكينا the dangerous thing about this condition is the rupturing of the important structure in this area like the brachial plexus brachial plexus and the subclavian artery how do we investigate this condition? First of all, طبعاً, clinical diagnosis is important. You have to ask the uh, طبعاً, patient will not be uh, conscious in most of cases, but بس لازم تسأل الناس اللي معه. تمام? After that, you have to do chest X-ray. What do we see in chest X-ray? In chest X-ray, we will see a swelling above the clavicle. A swelling above the clavicle. Shu sabab is swelling above the clavicle. A swelling above the clavicle is a result of hematoma. Sir inna subclavian artery rupturing. This rupture will lead to leakage of a blood. A blood will form hematoma here. Okay. خلينا هون نقارن بين right side and the left side هون الهيماتوما بتكون واضحة تمام what also can we see in uh, chest x-ray of sub uh, scapular thoracic dissociation ممكن نشوف ال dissociation نفسها زي ما انتو شايفين هون هاي السكابولا وهي ال chest ما إلهم علاقة ببعض normally scapula is protected anteriorly by the chest so it is posterior to the chest هون لا ما لهم علاقة ببعض فإحنا شفناها directly this is how we diagnose scapular thoracic dissociation طيب التريتمنت what concerns us هون بالتريتمنت that we have to resuscitate the patient okay yeah, the first thing to do is to resuscitate, resuscitate the patient because the patient most probably will have subclavian uh, and uh, subclavian rupturing and uh, brachial plexus injury and so on okay uh, unfortunately the outcome of scapulothoracic dissociation is very poor okay now I will move to a chromioclavicular joint injury Okay, a chromioclavicular joint injury. First of all, what is a chromioclavicular joint? A chromioclavicular joint is a joint between the lateral end of the clavicle and the acromion process of the scapula. 
this is the scapula this is the acromion process of the scapula and this is the clavicle lateral end or uh, lateral end and this is a chromioclavicular joint this joint is fixed in place by many ligaments and muscles a chromioclavicular ligament is the most important one of them also coracoclavicular ligament it plays an important role in fixing a chromioclavicular joint coracoclavicular ligament as I've mentioned in a previous video constitute two ligaments conoid and trapezoid conoid and a trapezoid ligament this is a posterior view of coracoclavicular joint oh, oh, acromioclavicular joint sorry this is acromion and this is the clavicle this is a chromioclavicular joint okay so a chromioclavicular joint a chromioclavicular ligament a coracoclavicular ligament uh, there are many muscles that also play an important role in protecting the acromioclavicular ligament these muscles are called uh, the rotator cuff okay rotator cuff they are supraspinatus infraspinatus teres minor and subscapularis this is a posterior view of the right shoulder and this is an interior view of the right shoulder in the posterior view we can see supraspinatus this is the spine of the scapula and this muscle is above the spine so it is supraspinatus and infraspinatus teres minor and the subscapularis these are four muscles that play an important role in fixing the acromioclavicular joint acromioclavicular joint okay many things uh, will cause uh, acromioclavicular injury okay sports in general is the most common and important causes falling down on shoulder falling down on shoulder and subluxation, subluxation of the hand will lead to acromioclavicular joint injury in a lot of cases as we can see here shoulder injury okay what are the types of acromioclavicular injury acromioclavicular injury was classified into six types the first one of them is just a simple sprain to acromioclavicular joint without any turning without any tearing just a sprain in this joint this is type 1 acromioclavicular joint injury type 2 will have a torn in the acromioclavicular joint okay type 3 will have a torn in acromioclavicular joint and in coracoclavicular joint also so type 1 symbol sprain type 2 torn in acromioclavicular joint only type 3 torn in acromioclavicular joint with the coracoclavicular joint type 4 which is a rare type of acromioclavicular joint injury will have total uh, turning in the acromioclavicular ligament in the coracoclavicular ligament and will have also a posterior displacement posterior displacement of the clavicle as we can see here the clavicle is posterior to the acromion process of the scapula and this is not the case in normal people okay type 4 type type 5 sorry type 5 will have superior or upward deviation of the clavicle it's a marked upward deviation of the clavicle the differentiate 
between type 1 and type 3, uh, type type 5, oh, sorry, to differentiate between type 3 and type 5, in type 3, we have a total uh, turning of the acromioclavicular ligament and the coracoclavicular ligament also, and we have also some degree of uh, upward deviation of the clavicle, but it is not marked degree. Okay, in type 5, we have a mild marked displacement of the clavicle. Clavicle is too far from the conoid coracoid process. Okay, so that's very um, quickly. Type 1, we have just a sprain of acromioclavicular ligament. Type 2, we have a torn in acromioclavicular ligament. Type 3, we have a turning in acromioclavicular ligament and the coracoclavicular ligament also with mild displacement of the clavicle upwardly type 4 we have a posterior posterior let's just write it posterior posterior deviation of the clavicle behind the chromium process type 5 we have marked upward dislocation of the clavicle okay a clinically how can we know that we have a chromioclavicular dislocation a step on the lateral end of the clavicle indicates that we have a chromioclavicular dislocation this is a step and this is a step compare the two shoulders we can't see this step on the right shoulder okay how do we investigate or image uh, a chromioclavicular joint dislocation uh, x-ray is the image of choice in this condition and we prefer do what we call a stress view a stress view a patient hold five kilogram approximately in each hand and this will lead eventually to showing to show the uh, displacement more clearly okay so this is stress a view x-ray of the shoulder and this type of x-ray will help us in differentiate between type 2 and type 3 type 2 type 2 and type a three okay here are some x-rays of a chromoclavicular dislocation it's obvious here this is normal a chromoclavicular ligament and this is a chromoclavicular dislocation chromoclavicular dislocation okay I believe we have some okay but uh, uh, if the if the distance between the coracoid process and inferior coracoid process and inferior border of the clavicle was on uh, on the injured side more than 50 per 50 percent difference from the normal side this is a diagnostic of a chromoclavicular dislocation again if we have the distance between okay I'll just change the color distance between the acromion process uh, often the coracoid process oh I to learn this okay distance between the coracoid process and the inferior border of the scapula on the injured side and the distance of the coracoid process and the inferior border of the clavicle in the normal side let's just imagine that it was like this if the difference between this and this was above 50 percent this indicates that we have a, a chromoclavicular dislocation okay so how do we treat a chromoclavicular dislocation if we had just uh, uh, type 1, for example, a chromoclavicular dislocation with sprain only, without any dislocation, 
uh, uh, sling and exercise would be a good choice okay so we don't have any dislocation the acromioclavicular joint is in a place except of some spraining of the ligament we just use a sling to immobilize an injured joint and we do some early exercise but if we have a degree of dislocation we have to repair the torn ligament as we see here the, uh, as we can see here we have the ligaments sutured okay we have to approximate the ligaments again and after that we have to hold the repair we've done with screws من حط مسامير بنثبتها بين الكلافيكل and the coracoid process شايفين screws between the clavicle and the coracoid process طبعا after suturing the injured ligaments بعد تمانية تمانية weeks بنشيل هذا السكريو اوكي okay. it takes it takes us eight weeks weeks لا نشيل ال ال الليجمنت اوكي هذا التريتمنت طيب وات ايش الكومبليكيشنز اللي ممكن تصير من اكروميو كلافيكولار جوينت انجري اول شيء the dislocation of the clavicle okay will lead to inflammation and edema in the tendon of the rotator cuff muscle specifically of the supraspinous tendon supraspinous tendon okay the inflammation and edema in the supraspinous tendon is called rotator cuff syndrome rotator cuff syndrome okay and it is a uh, يعني subtype تبع rotator cuff syndrome في حالة inflammation of the supraspinous tendon is called supraspinatus tendinitis supraspinatus tendinitis طيب كيف ممكن نعالجها supraspinatus tendinitis زي ما حكينا supraspinatus tendinitis uh, which is a, a subtype of the uh, rotator cuff syndrome is an inflammation so we have to give anti-inflammatory drugs anti-inflammatory okay anti-inflammatory etc drugs okay this is supraspinatus tendinitis هاي الصورة كمان بتبين لنا supraspinatus tendinitis بنعطيها anti-inflammatory drug okay ايش كمان complications غير الروتيتر كف سندروم ممكن تنتج لنا عن acromio clavicular joint injury ممكن نواجه unreduced dislocation dislocation is here ونحاول to repair it بس ما يصير له repairing فمصير عنا unreduced dislocation ايش كمان يعني هي حكينا واحد اللي هي روتيتر كف سندروم اثنين unreduced dislocation ثلاث ايش ثلاث ثلاث ممكن يصير عنا ossification ossification of the ligament ossification of the ligament هذا هو الليجمنت اللي هو acromio clavicular ligament ممكن بعد التيرنج يصير له ossification ossification بمعنى بصير بوني بتحول لبوني ستراكشر بدل ما هو ليجمنت وزي ما احنا شايفين بالاكس راي هون الاوبيسيتي هاي indicates او سكليروسينج هاد indicates انه عندنا اوسيفيكيشن اوف اكروميو اكلافيكولار ليجمنت وكمان ممكن يصير عندنا فور اللي هي سكندري اوستيو ارثرايتس سكندري اوستيو ارثرايتس سو روتيتر كف سندروم ان ريديوس ديسلوكيشن اوسيفيكيشن اند سكندري osteoarthritis are all complications of acromioclavicular joint dislocation okay by this I end the talk about scapulothoracic dissociation and acromioclavicular joint injury
see you in the next video